Ovulation is your inner summer. You're gonna feel hot, you're gonna feel sexy, you're gonna feel turned on, and you're probably gonna have the most energy during this phase. Hey friends, my name is Cece, and if you're new here, welcome to my little corner of the internet where I share things about my life and the things that I'm learning to inspire you and to help you grow into the best version of yourself. <laughs> Last week I shared a video about the follicular phase. So we're gonna continue on this little series here and jump into the ovulation phase. And yes, you guessed it, this is when you ovulate. What is ovulating? That is when the egg gets released from your ovary and is ready to make a baby. So today we'll talk about what happens in your body, what happens with your hormones, we'll talk about what to eat during this phase, we'll talk about how to exercise, how to work, what your superpower is, and lastly, your fertility. All right, so like I said before, ovulation is the main event of your hormonal cycle. This is when the egg gets released from the ovary and is ready for fertilization, aka time to make a baby or abstain from unprotected sex. <laughs> so ovulation happens right after the follicular phase. And what's going on with your hormones? So there will be a dramatic rise in estrogen and this other hormone called LH or luteinizing hormone. I think I said that right. <laughs> the luteinizing hormone or LH is the hormone that triggers the mature egg to be released from the ovary where it makes its way down the fallopian tube into the uterus, where thanks to estrogen, there is this beautiful, lush, immune protecting place for your egg to live for about 24 hours. There's also a sharp incline and decline of testosterone. So this is why you might feel a little extra spicy, you might feel a little more social and ready to go if you know what I mean. So that's kind of what's going on in your body when you ovulate. Now we'll talk about what foods are most supportive during this phase. Like I said, this is your inner summer. So think bright, think vibrant and fresh. Cooler foods are good during the ovulation. Your body can handle more raw foods in this phase. So things like salads, you've got your leafy greens and spinach veggies like bell pepper, eggplant, tomatoes. Your fruity BFFs are gonna be raspberries and strawberries, full of fiber and packed with antioxidants, which are just great for clearing that excess estrogen out of your body. For proteins, you'll be reaching for things like red lentils, lamb, salmon, and tuna. You'll want to continue the flax seeds and the pumpkin seeds from your follicular phase. So if you're familiar with seed cycling, this is kind of part of that seed cycling is follicular and ovulation, get the flax and the pumpkin, and then luteal and menstrual gets the sesame and sunflower seeds. Turmeric is also super beneficial during this phase. With its anti-inflammatory properties, it really helps to clear out that excess estrogen and those excess hormones so you're not getting that hormone imbalance in your luteal phase. I personally take a turmeric supplement pretty much every day. Ovulatory foods are all about promoting that antioxidant well-being in the body to support your ovaries and create the healthiest egg possible. With a little boost of testosterone in this phase as well, you can handle a little bit more stressful foods, things like caffeine or alcohol. If you're going to drink caffeine or drink alcohol, your ovulatory phase is the best phase to do so just because you have that testosterone that can help you manage the stress a little bit better. Now I like to give a little disclaimer about the food because I know it can be really overwhelming and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm in my follicular or ovulatory phase and I'm eating a sweet potato, like that's bad. No, it's not bad to eat a sweet potato in your ovulatory phase, right? These are more of just a guideline. These are foods that are supportive. And if it feels really overwhelming, I would suggest just picking out a couple of things, maybe rotating your fruit or rotating the meat that you eat or the beans that you eat, or maybe changing up your cooking methods according to the cycle. Like you can start really small 
because it can be really overwhelming and sometimes hard to make a whole meal with only ovulatory supporting foods. Like obviously it's possible, but there, as long as you're eating a healthy whole food, good diet that makes you feel good. And if eating a potato in your ovulatory phase feels good, then eat a freaking potato. It's not that serious. You're not going to be not supporting your cycle, right? So definitely take the food with a grain of salt and do whatever works best for you. If you want to eat strawberries when you have your period, go ahead and eat the strawberries. Bless your soul and eat the delicious, yummy, juicy strawberry, right? Like, we can't, we're not perfect out here. We're just trying to do our best. <laughs> Next we'll talk exercise. I realized that I forgot to put this in my last video. So we'll talk about the follicular phase in this one as well. Luckily, follicular and ovulatory are pretty much the same when it comes to exercise. So in the first half of your cycle, it's all about getting your heart rate up, doing that cardio and building muscle. So in the follicular phase, if you remember, it's all about new beginnings. So this would also be a great time to try something new, maybe try a new dance class, maybe hike a new trail or something like that, getting in that nice cardio, um, maybe trying a new weightlifting routine, something like that, just to bring that little spark of newness that goes along great with your follicular phase. It makes life fun, right? <laughs> As you move towards ovulation, your estrogen and your testosterone are gonna be at their peak levels. So you're gonna have energy to burn. So workouts that are great in this phase are like HIIT workouts, maybe a kickboxing class, doing your heaviest weightlifting at this time because you have that extra energy, you have that boost of estrogen and testosterone. The most important thing as a cyclical woman working out and doing these things is to not push yourself too hard because that puts our body in a state of stress, especially if you have imbalanced hormones or you're prone to things like anxiety and depression. Overworking yourself, pushing yourself too hard is not going to be good. You're not going to feel good. It's going to actually do the opposite effect of what you want because you'll start to pump out cortisol, which excess cortisol is no good. You're going to go from fat burning mode to fat storing mode. And obviously when you exercise, that's kind of the opposite of what you want to achieve. The main thing is to just listen to your body and of course push yourself. You know, we're not just going to go and lift like a two pound weight or something like you can push yourself of course but listen to your body try not to way overdo it because it does put your body in that state of stress now we're going to go into working in your ovulatory phase slash your superpower i have a little fun fact from a book called in the flow by Alyssa Vitti. great book if you want to get into cycle syncing she stated that according to a study in the Journal of Comparative Neurology, with that surge of estrogen happening in our bodies, it increases the synaptic connections in the brain, which can boost mental sharpness, creativity, and your communication skills. Boom. So connecting with others is really at the heart of this phase. This would be a great time to schedule conversations with your boss or your team, your clients, or even have a conversation with your partner. This would also be a great time to record video content, record a podcast, jump on a live, or writing your marketing content, writing social media posts. You have that boost of communication, that boost of creativity in this phase. So use that to your advantage. Your heightened communication skills make it easier to convey your thoughts and also be receptive to others' thoughts and opinions and conversations. Your physical energy is also higher during this phase. So now is the time to execute all of those brilliant, creative, fun ideas that you had in your follicular phase. Get her done. All right, last thing, we'll get into fertility. Like I said, this is the time to make a baby if that's what you want to do. Now, if you're using the fertility awareness method for either trying to conceive a baby or use it as a form of birth control, 
these days are arguably the most important to track on your app or on your calendar or however you track it. So key things that you will look for in your ovulatory phase. First, we'll look at cervical fluid. So your cervical fluid is gonna be the wettest during this time. You're gonna notice a lot more of it. It's gonna be much more wet when you either wipe or in your underwear when you see it. It's gonna be kind of like super sticky, um, like an egg white consistency and can stretch several inches. So that's what you're gonna be looking for on your peak days of ovulation. So if you're trying to have a baby, those would be your days, right? If you're trying to use this as birth control, do not have unprotected sex on those days. So this egg white-like consistency is the prime fluid for the sperm to survive. It's like a little sperm slip and slide where the egg is just waiting to choose the best sperm. <laughs> And like I mentioned in the last video, you'll start to notice this wetter, slipperier cervical fluid in the days leading up to your ovulation. So sperm can survive in your body for up to five days in that wet, slippery fluid. Now, the other important thing you can track during this time is your temperature. So what will happen actually after you ovulate is your temperature will significantly rise. With that drop in estrogen, your temperature shoots up. So you won't know this until after you ovulate if you're tracking this. So how you'll know that you ovulated is one, you'll have that pretty wet cervical fluid. And then the next day, your temperature will significantly rise. So these are the things that you're gonna wanna track in your app or on your calendar or however you do so. Now with your temperature, it has to be your temperature first thing when you wake up in the morning or if you get some sort of device like an aura ring or whatever, you this automatically tracks your temperature as the lowest temperature while you're sleeping. Um, but you can just use a regular thermometer and take your temperature in the morning right when you wake up if you wanna use that method as well. And then if you're using this for birth control, you will know that you are okay to have unprotected sex again up to three days after you had your wettest cervical fluid, your temperature has been high for three consecutive days and your cervical fluid has basically gotten drier. So that's how you'll know you are ready to have unprotected sex again. And if you're trying to get pregnant, you would know, okay, well, I'm not fertile these days. You can still have sex, obviously, do you, boo boo, but you're not gonna get pregnant this time. <laughs> Woo! Okay, the ovulatory phase. She might be short, but she is powerful and packed with energy and sexiness and all the good things. As always, please send me a message. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram at ccmarie and hit that like button and subscribe for next week's video. We'll be getting into the luteal phase, everybody's favorite. All right, friends, I love ya. Ciao.